Madam Speaker, I rise to wind, wind up the debate on the 2017-2018 budgetary proposals. But Madam Speaker, before I go on, I want to first of all recognize the, the sterling contributions from the members of the government side. Everybody here accounted for himself and herself very well in reporting on last year's performance and stewardship, but also, ex and also explaining some of the progressive policies articulated in this year's budget. But Madam Speaker, were I a legal practitioner, I would be tempted on this occasion to enter a no-case submission. <laughs> In response, Madam Speaker, to this feeble attempt by the parliamentary opposition to respond to this year's financial statement and budgetary proposals. I said this year's and not last Thursdays, because by now it is clear to all Dominicans that the leader of the opposition and his colleagues in Parliament did not respond to the budget as presented on Thursday. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I feel some sympathy for the leader of the opposition because he is insecure in his abilities. He was so clearly unsure of his ability to respond to the budget on his feet that he chose to write his budget speech before he had even heard the speech. Madam Speaker, he made a bet that this government, blessed with strong public finances, would not grasp the opportunity to place Dominica on a new trajectory of growth and development. And they have done so repeatedly. Every time they make a bet on this government, Madam Speaker, they lose that bet. Yes. His response, Madam Speaker, had no critic of the specific initiatives brought to this honorable house. It made no mention of the bold steps to make our income tax rates more competitive, boosting incentives to work, and the need to develop an entrepreneurial spirit and character in our society. It doesn't matter whether they agree with the policies or not. Every single one of the policies enunciated in this budget address, Madam Speaker, will affect in a positive way the lives of every single of our citizens in Dominica. And therefore, our people need to know how does the opposition view these policies and programs? Because it will impact on their lives, Madam Speaker. He comes here and he says that the parliament, there needs to be more parliamentary scrutiny of fiscal measures. But in the budget address, Madam Speaker, had he waited to prepare his response to the budget, he would have seen that the government is now adopting international best practice by the establishment of the Fiscal Policy Panel, which will provide independent scrutiny and, criti and critic of the government's fiscal policies. But that panel will also be invited to the parliament. These will be three independent experts in their fields, Madam Speaker. But he had nothing to say about the fiscal policy panel. But in, you know, in, 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 he preferred to, to amend the Constitution because what he proposed 
requires serious amendment to the Constitution of Dominica. So they don't even realize that the proposal which they pointed out would require amendments to the Constitution of the country, man and speak. The leader of the position, Madam Speaker, has a duty, has a duty to propose alternatives. And we can say, Madam Speaker, that there has been a, an abandoning of his responsibility, dereliction of responsibility, Madam Speaker, for not taking the time and pre prepare a positive alternative to what the government has been, has been prepared. And Madam Speaker, this is the first time in the history of our parliament this has happened, not even when Mr. Hector John, the member of Salisbury, former member of Leader Lawson, was there. I mean, in all fairness to the young Mr. Speaker, he would try a little thing here and there, though he could not comprehend most of what he said then. <laughs> but he tried. But he tried. Yeah, he tried. With his abilities. But the leader of the position now is taking a lazy man's approach towards a, the very high responsibility which he now has, that of leader of the opposition. But what this has revealed, Madam Speaker, to the Dominican people is that the leader of the opposition has very little ideas of his own, if any. And it also revealed, Madam Speaker, that some of the proposals from the leader of the opposition and the parliamentary opposition in Dominica to this parliament and this country are very dangerous. They're very dangerous, Madam Speaker. When he proposes to have a budget prepared with primary surplus of 6% of GDP, we must examine how do you, how would you go about achieving this 6%? What would have, what we would need to do as a country to achieve this 6%? This primary surplus of 6% of GDP, Madam Speaker. They offer no ideas as to how he would do so, other than raising VAT. And let me say to the people of Dominica, that in my consultation with independent experts on looking at Dominica's situation, and advising on what would, have ha what would have to happen in terms of our budgetary system situation to cause now to have to be a 6% of GDP, Madam Speaker, the experts have said to me, Madam Speaker, we would, have had, we would need to do many things in Dominica. First, you would have to increase the, VAT of, the, VAT, the, the, the rate of VAT to 25%, Madam Speaker. Understand this. You would have to increase the rate of VAT from 15% to 25%. In addition to that, Madam Speaker, you would have to dramatically cut the budgets of health education, and all of the social programs which are benefiting the people of Dominica. So when men read things, Madam Speaker, you see in this position, Madam Speaker, you have to be advised sometimes. I have my own views, but there are things that you have to sound it by people. What do you think? Check this out for me. Advise me on this. And even when people advise you on something, you must even seek advice from somebody else to get a different perspective. Right. So this is what you have to do. Right. To understand this, Madam Speaker, we have to be very careful. And the experts are saying to me that this proposal would plunge the Dominican economy into recession. plunge it into recession, increase unemployment. 
Mr. Member for Rosa Central, the expert on everything in this house. Increase unemployment. That's what the extra saying to me. And would create dramatic inequality within our country, which means poverty would rise, indigence would rise. That's what, that's, that's, these are the proposals presented by the parliamentary opposition as an alternative government. Just plagiarizing things from different speeches, cut, copy and paste in Madam Speaker, not understanding what someone else has written, they want to come and, and repeat, and you could see this discomfort with the presentation. So this is what you're going to do. So Madam Speaker, the Dominican Labour Party, which I have the honor to lead, we reject the policy of trying to grow the economy by increasing taxation in Dominic. No no we reject that, Madam Speaker. Yes. We reject any policies that will come about to reduce spending on education and spending on health, Madam Speaker. As a matter of fact, in this budget, as you've seen in all budgets we have brought to this parliament, from 2001, we've been increasing the budget for health and education. How can you put proposals now to defund education and to defund health? It cannot be right. This government, Madam Speaker, reject the IMF prescription because the IMF is not a development bank. They're not a development bank, Madam Speaker. So he, go, he comes here and to part his speech, he quotes, he includes so much of IMF. All of a sudden he's the IMF man. Because you go to one to the workshop and he met an IMF person and they did like a presentation and he got the card and emailing the person. Now he's the IMF guru, the leader of the opposition. Quoting also IMF, IMF said this, IMF said that. But the IMF is not a bank that deals with development issues. The IMF comes in to rescue countries. Dominica doesn't need any rescuing from the IMF. Our debt to GDP is not 120% or more. That's when the IMF comes in. When your debt to GDP ratio is 120 plus, they come in to rescue you. The bank of last resort, that's what they call themselves. Madam Speaker, our debt to GDP ratio, our national debt now stands at 67%. Yes. And if you take out our guarantees for the, to the aid bank and to do our school, it will be 51%. Central government debt to GDP ratio would be at 51% if we remove our guarantees. To the, to, the, to, the, to the aid bank and to Duasco. And our, our guarantees to, to, to Duasco is to bring portable water to every part of Dominica. And our, 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 our guarantees to the aid bank is to give cheaper financing to the private sector in Dominica to create jobs. So it's an investment. So we don't want no IMF prescriptions when we do not need them. I mean, if they are friends, they're my friends, I like them, they like me too. <laughs> but we don't need them. Because they have confirmed, Madam Speaker, that there is no fiscal unsustainability in Dominica at this stage. There is none. So, we don't need the IMF in Dominica, as the leader of the has indicated, that if you were to come into office, he would have an IMF program. Essentially, that's what it is. Essentially, he would have an IMF program in Dominica, austerity, tax on man, tax on woman. We are saying 
that we have brought our country with stable debt that we can afford to pay, our fiscal policies are prudent and responsible, and now we are on onward march to creating higher levels of sustained growth in our country, thereby creating jobs, reducing unemployment, reducing poverty, Madam Speaker. And we're not unafraid to invest in people, to invest in the country, to invest in the private sector. You have four minutes left. To help, Madam Speaker. Four minutes, sorry. Only 20 minutes. Time, you know, no, no, every, no, only 20 minutes you have. 20 minutes, Madam Speaker, I move that the Honourable Prime Minister be given an additional 15 minutes to complete his wind up of the budget debate. Second, Madam Speaker. It has been moved and seconded that the Prime Minister be given a further 15 minutes to complete his winding up. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. Please continue. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. This, they come here and talk about markets for, ban for, for agricultural produce. Madam Speaker, I can tell you this is the best time for farmers in Dominica. This is the best time for farmers in Dominica. We're giving you the roads, cheap financing, inputs, Madam Speaker, highly subsidized prices or subsidized altogether, markets. We know farmers are not able to plant to, and they know for, for fact there are markets waiting for them. One 20 foot container of dashing per week to a distributor in Florida, Madam Speaker, and they said nothing about that. And that has been going on for months, Madam Speaker. The supply of one 20 foot container of dashing and other root crops for fortnight to a wholesaler in England, Madam Speaker. Steady, secured markets for our farmers. The increased supply of mixed produce to the regional market and re-entry into the UK banana market with the support of Winfresh. Yeah. These things mean nothing to them. They talk about farmers. They try to use farmers for their own political ends. Yeah. But they're not happy for the farmers. They're not happy that farmers are able to sell because they want farmers to complain that they're poor, they can't sell, they're dashing rotten in, they're yam rotten in, Madam Speaker. The opposition loves to see people talking about misery. Yes. I'm unemployed, boss. I know no work, no food. That's what it is. Madam Speaker, they mentioned nothing about the new national hospital, nothing about the investments in health, nothing, Madam Speaker, about the $5 million more that we have put in the budget to help people suffering from cancers and other illnesses in our country. Because they do not care about people. They do not care about people, Madam Speaker, and the member of the South who is not there. Instead of applauding this, he's saying, oh, we should spend the money for research. White people, white people having cancer. So you telling me, you telling me that a lot of people to die and go and do a study to find a white person with cancer? You see, Security ever have love taking soft, soft, soft. You're a dangerous man, you're a man. Nothing about it. The Chinese government, the People's Republic of China, the one China policy, a friend of Dominica, is giving us a gift of 117 million EC dollars. And not nowhere in your speech of two hours, you send thanks to the Chinese. Nothing at all. The government of Mexico, in the budget, Madam Speaker, five million US dollars that will go to the Marigot Hospital. And no reference to that. Zero. Zero. Instead, he read a speech that he delivered in June of 2014, Madam Speaker. And he plagiarized. He took, he took from other people's speeches and he put it together. That's what it is. That's what it is, Madam Speaker. Nothing about it, Madam Speaker. In this financial year, 
We'll build a new health center in Vekas, a new health center in Coliho, a new center in Bellevue Chopin, Madam Speaker, investing in the health, training people, training young Dominicans to take over the health system, Madam Speaker, and they make no reference to these things. It is not of interest to them, Madam Speaker. No interest at all. They don't even thank the UK government for, for investing about five hospitals and health centers to create smart um, clinics to withstand disasters, Madam Speaker. No thank you, no reference to these things. These things don't, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not interested in this, Madam Speaker. They're not interested in it at all. They're not interested in this thing, Madam Speaker. Then deal from all. He says we should go back to Hydro. But Mr. Leader of the Opposition, we have never left Hydro. The man is totally disconnected to the country. And talk about wind. Madam Speaker, we have been able to secure the monies required to build the seven megawatt plant. And I can tell you, Madam Speaker, the level of respect this government and this country has among the international community, Madam Speaker, is unprecedented. <laughs> unprecedented, Madam Speaker, where New Zealand is, was literally running after us, take help from us, look help, look help. They've been, they've been there with us. The UK government gave us the first five. We wrote to them and said, look, man, guess look at us, I'll something more. They have a five to eight, 10 million US now. The United Arab Emirates, the, the, the Renewable Fund, they have committed to give us about, about, about 16 million US dollars. The World Bank has been literally begging us to take money from them at 0.75% with a 10 year grace period and 40 years to repay. So the funding for the geothermal is here, and we are just at the, at, at the threshold of bringing about cheaper energy to the to, to Don Dominica. And the leader of the position and the parliamentary opposition is telling us, look, scrap that. Delay the relief to the people of Dominica. Delay the relief to the manufacturers. Don't give Dominicans no help. Anything that is good for Dominica, man and speaker, they seek to destroy. It's bad. It's unacceptable. And we should stop it, man and speaker. No reference to our ma massive investment in infrastructure. If we did not have Erica, Madam Speaker, and because when you look at the amount of money that we spend to respond to Erica, just imagine, Dominicans, if as, as the Minister of Finance, we had this money to invest in our program, which we announced here in 2014. And notwithstanding, Erica, Madam Speaker, we have been able to do a, 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 word, but a good job, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Madam Speaker, DM job, Madam Speaker. Leave that, Madam Speaker. Because we have been responsible and prudent. We have been generous, but responsible. And my colleague can always tell you that. I always keep saying we have to be generous to the people of this country, but we also, also must be responsible. Because one bad mistake you make with the finance of the country can bring us back to the dark days. But nothing like this, Madam Speaker, nothing about tropical stock, Erica, nothing about resettlement, nothing about people who, who, who got help, nothing about Re, re, um, resetting his life, and we have done a remarkable job in the circumstance, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Nothing about it, Madam Speaker. Nothing about it. Nothing about the rose enhancement, the, the rehabilitation. The Chinese are going a fantastic job in constructing these retaining walls. On the West Coast, Madam Speaker, nothing about it, the dredging of the rivers. Nothing about the income tax. We have taken the income tax threshold from $12,000, Madam Speaker, 
to up to thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars, Madam Speaker. Are you telling me you couldn't spend two minutes to talk about that? When fifty percent of the workers' supporters will benefit, and fifty percent of the working people of Dominica will benefit, Madam Speaker, that's of no interest to you. Zero. You're not happy that taxpayers will pay less come January 1st, 2018? <laughs> Nothing at all, Madam Speaker. And that will take the tax. The whole idea is to create this one tax rate. And Madam Speaker, let me say to the people of Dominica, we are going to send this for advice to the fiscal policy panel, Madam Speaker. But don't rule out do not rule out a complete eradication of income tax in Dominica. And move completely to a system of consumption taxes, Madam Speaker. And give people what they earn, the 100% of their money, give it to them. But my only advice to Dominicans is that the monies that the government is getting you to hold, save it. Do not use the extra little income to go and buy things to bring. Save it. Save while you're young. So when you get old, Madam Speaker, you will have something you can go and withdraw. Do not go and waste this money. Save it. But the people of Dominica understand the benefit of that tax break to them, Madam Speaker. A progressive government, a progressive tax system, and that's what it started some seven years ago. And just imagine, as Austria said, Minister Austria said, if we didn't have to spend all these years fixing the mess we inherited, paying debts, paying Social Security, when we came into office, we couldn't pay salaries. In 1999, 1998, every month the computer broke down. Lying to the people. And the last ditch effort went to Trinidad and borrowed, took money from Dominica, brought it to Trinidad and borrowed the money. So we lent to Trinidad 3% and borrowed at 19%. Our so same money. It is like, Madam Speaker, a man goes on sea, he catches fish, he sells it at $2 a pound, and he goes to the, the river there and buys it at $10 a pound, Madam Speaker. That's what it is. And that, and we, we tell them, Madam Speaker, and that's, that's what, that's the economic model which the member of Rosso is parading as the savior of Dominica. Money was meeting money. <laughs> what I can tell you, when you were close today, Madam Speaker, a bounce check meeting bounce check, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Bounce check within bounce check. <laughs> Reneging our responsibility to pay our taxes or our debts. Madam Speaker, that's the Workers' Party. That's the Workers' Party, Madam Speaker. They're not interested in educating our people. We increased the budget for education to train people, skills. Graduates, Madam Speaker, the, the Workers' Party led by Mr. Linton has a problem when it comes to talking about training, university, graduates, Madam Speaker, anything that has to do with education, Mr. Linton has a problem with it. You lead on the position, Madam Speaker. But for me, for me, Madam Speaker, I want the youths of Dominica to be more successful than I have been as a young person, Madam Speaker. And I will spare no effort to ensure that every single child in Dominica can get the opportunity to realize his dream, Madam Speaker. And I went out of my office today, and the time that Mr. John Memvoso was saying that I, I don't come to Parliament and so on, <clears throat> but I was approving of scholarships or to send children to study. And as a young boy from Portsmouth, I will call his name on Mr. Lloyd. Come from a challenged family. But the boy 
had some challenges himself, bounced back, did well in school, and he, he said his dream is to go to university to study economics. And I granted him a scholarship today. That's what it is, Madam Speaker. That's what it is. But the Workers' Party has a problem with that. But Mr. Linton, the leader of the position, whatever he gets opportunity is to attack Dominica. Attack Dominica. So he goes on CBS in January and back eyes the country, attacks our country, undermines our country, Madam Speaker. Never. I mean, we were here in Parliament, Madam Speaker. Parliament is a place where you, you throw some jabs there, you throw some shots in, Madam Speaker, but we must be able to embrace each other as Dominicans. So when you're in parliament, you can fight, you can, you can, you can have some, some, some verbal fist fights. But when you leave Dominica, you are a Dominican. You're not a workers Dominica or a labor right Dominican. You are Dominican, and therefore you must defend the honor, protect our country. But every time Mr. Linton gets an opportunity to speak with Dominica, is to destroy Dominica. To destroy our country. To speak negatively about our country. The United States government writes to you as a country. You haven't seen the correspondence. You heard something on the radio, Madam Speaker, and then you go and you write a letter. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't understand. I, I, have, I have go to countries, Madam Speaker, but when people talk about the country, they may be from different political parties. But they speak about their country. But Mr. Linton has brought a different type of politics to the country. And uh, Mr. Honorable Oster is right. When Mr. Linton is not in the parliament, we are brothers and sisters in opposition government. We're laughing, we're joking. Spags, I'm sorry, I'm the member for Salisbury. That's because I know he got the name Spags, you know. <laughs> but, Madam Speaker, we're all right. We're friends, Madam Speaker. You understand? But from the time the leader of the person comes into the house, this guy's face is changed. They cannot smile. They cannot joke. It's a different type of politics. And the, the, the Senator Thomas knows that, and he's shaking his head in agreement with Roosevelt's character. <laughs> Because, Madam Speaker, when you see him here, I'm there, and Linton is there sitting down. He, he does not even. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, <clears throat> so we have to, we have to work together in this country, Madam Speaker, to build our country. The government proposes X. Then propose why and give reasons why you propose why. How would why work? Because we've always said, Madam Speaker, this is why I listen to people. And I asked the leader of opposition for, for a copy of his speech after the, his presentation. I didn't get one. I had, to, I had to get it transcribed to get it to read it. You haven't seen it, you. You haven't seen it. You haven't seen it, Mr. Isaac. You haven't seen it. <laughs> I had to get it transcribed, Mr. John, member for Salisbury, to, to read it. You haven't even read the copy, Madam Speaker. And it is, it, it, is, it is a shame. It is a shame. We expect more from the, from the leader of the opposition, Madam Speaker. We expect more from him. And, but but he's clearly he's disconnected from the people, Madam Speaker, because we had a series of consultations, town hall meetings, hearing from the people. We met with Bicard, um, Tony Libla, and so on, Mr. Tony Libla. They made the recommendations. Mr. Libla thought that I would never carry forward with the, with the recommendations. But they're in, they, they, they came here, they know, they know part of the law. They know part of the law. Met your children, I met your met family. One, one family suffering from autism, the daughter suffering from autism. Your time is up. Cannot work, Madam Speaker.
Speaker, I move that the Honourable Prime Minister be granted an additional 10 minutes to complete his conclusion on the budget. Seconded, Madam Speaker. It has been moved and seconded that the Honourable Prime Minister gets a further five, five minutes, ten minutes to complete his winding up. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. Your Madam final Speaker, ten minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Let's talk about the leader who doesn't have enough time to respond, Madam Speaker. Now, if we are students of contemporary history, and I'm talking about ancient history, contemporary history, and we study what happens in other, other jurisdictions, Madam Speaker. There are some jurisdictions, the Minister of Finance sits, and the opposition leader stands up. Just this, Madam Speaker, in Barbados, for example, the, 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 the Minister of Finance ended this speech at about after 8 at night, and next afternoon, the leader of the opposition had to stand up at 3 p.m. to give a speech, to respond. To respond. Mr. Linton does not have the discipline of work that is required in these positions. What he should have done, because he got a copy of my speech moments after I delivered it. So he had several hours to go home and study that speech and, 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 and tear it up, dissect it. Nothing like that. You, in this job, Madam Speaker, it requires discipline. It requires hard work. Let hours, doing things constructive, researching, reading, consulting. Not just talking, 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 Madam Speaker. Reading. So, Madam Speaker, we in this government, we have all grounds to declare, Madam Speaker, a no-case submission by Mr. Linton. They, instead, Madam Speaker, they chose to rehash all sorts of unfounded allegations, Madam Speaker. All kinds of unfounded allegations. But I, I was very impressed, and I can say to your colleagues that I don't you do to go home and, 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 and do what you're telling me and tell you how great you have been. <laughs> but the people out there saying that you, are, you, are, you all were fantastic in your presentations and account of yourselves, but, but requires more work, so we have to continue working hard. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I also want to indicate to the country that I visited Comrade Ivor Stevenson on Sunday in, in Martinique, and he has made considerable progress, considering all everything. <laughs> He's, he's alert. He could have recognized us. He could say my name and Honorable Douglas and, and McIntyre. Um, I also brought his brother with me. Um, he is going through therapy, both speech and, and uh, physical therapy. He's able to stand, not having the full strength of his, of his right leg yet, but he could stand and hold onto the railing and, and, and walk. You know. So we continue to pray for him. We continue to provide all the support to him, morally and otherwise, and to say to him and to his people that all of his hard work in that constituency, because he was a soft-spoken person, but very committed to his people in Grand Fond, Mont John River Civic. And I'm saying to the people of Grand Fond, Mont John River Civic, that this government is absolutely committed to ensuring that the work of Ivo Stevenson continues. I have taken up the responsibility of being the, the, the acting parliament Madam speaker and deputized by Honorable Seja. So we'll continue to work with the people to ensure that they get, continue to get the good representation which Ivo Stevenson provided to him when he was. So we look forward to his full recovery where he can, he can, he can report back to duty and, 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 and be in, in, in the front line of continuing to assist the people, Madam Speaker. But Madam Speaker, I am very proud and, of course, humble uh, to lead such a focused and united team, Madam Speaker. I can say, I can say it without any fear of contradiction that we have the most united government and party 
in the entire Caribbean region. Man. I have the absolute support of my, of, of my colleague ministers and my colleague parliamentarians, Madam Speaker. And that is important. That is important when we all have the same vision, we all have the same commitment, we are all on the same mission to create a better way of life for every single citizen in our country. And that is very important, Madam Speaker. We cannot say the same thing for the opposition, Madam Speaker. We cannot say this, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, with our economy now rebuilt and secure after Erica, with our public finances safe and steadily improving, we can set off on a path to realize a modern, prosperous Dominica. A Dominica where our people are highly skilled, are well paid doing value, value added activities, and are engaged in exporting their goods, produce, and services around the world. A Dominica where economic security for all brings more fulfillment and peace. A Dominica where the government offers a helping hand to those willing to upgrade their skills beyond school and college. A Dominica where work is rewarded and better housing is more attainable. Madam Speaker, we do not embark on this venture lightly. We recognize that this journey will not be short or smooth. And we know we need help, wisdom, and inspiration of all Dominicans to carry, out, carry us to the end. But we also know that every journey begins with a first step. And with this budget, that is the step we take tonight, Madam Speaker. I wish, Madam Speaker, to commend this budget to this Honorable House, confident in the belief that it will be embraced and approved because of the solid measures contained therein. I want to say to Dominicans that by working together, we can realize all of the pronouncements in this budget. And if we're able to realize these pronouncements, I give the assurances that our country will be in a better place one year from now. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This concludes the debate on the estimates. The estimates shall now be referred to the Committee of Supply of the whole House.